Wouldn't you rather think that you offended them by asking for the truth than feeling offended that they stole from you? My goal in life is to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential. If I haven't used every ounce of energy to provide value and be of service, I've ruined the day. I'm building a brand the last three and a half years for one purpose. I want to empower over a billion people to be happy. That will empower a thousand people in your lifetime to empower a thousand people simply to be happy, to make more money, help more people, and have more fun. You have to know what the market is. So people will talk about crypto right now and know nothing about the market. Right, the market, you need to know what it is. My favorite way is to, to move to the next step is know your who. Right, know your who, find the expert that has been there for 30 or 40 years or someone that knows the market and can tell you when it's time to buy or when it's time to sell. Can you think of an easier way to make money? If I was gonna buy a stock, I'd like to have Warren Buffett's number and say, hey man, do you think this thing's oversold or overbought? You laugh, but think about it. Why, why are we determined? Because he knows what the market is. He knows what the market is. Now, if you know your what with weighted balance, et cetera, the next step to making decisions is to know your who. Because the easiest way to make a decision is to find someone that already has the directions to get there, right? The easiest way to get to where we want to go is to find someone that's already there and ask them for directions. So you need to know your who, but also know who you're dealing with in a transaction is you're making an investment either in yourself or in business. If you're making that investment, the biggest mistake that I think people make is they trust people without vetting them. I think it's fine to trust. I trust everyone. And that got me in big trouble. As you know, I lost over $100 million trusting a lot of people because I just assumed the best in them. I'm looking for the best. We all like to look for the best in people. But the part that I didn't get was knowing my who was also an accountability to vet the shit out of them. How many times have you been in a conversation, an investment conversation or a business conversation and something doesn't make sense and then you go ahead and do the business or make the investment and what? You feel manipulated, cheated, lied, oversold, back end sold and then you feel offended that they rip you off. Wouldn't you rather think that you offended them by asking for the truth than feeling offended that they stole from you. Trust everyone. Look for the light, the lessons in, the, in everyone, but vet the shit out of them. Ask the hard questions. Be more interested than interesting. Too many people love the deal, right? Emotions are the deal killers to me. People buy and invest on emotion and then they back it up with logical reasons. The problem with logic, it has no place, as I mentioned earlier, logic has no place with emotions at all. Logic will not change or validate your feelings. So if you're making your investments on a feeling, right? I like that guy. I, I like this deal. No, you don't like a deal. A good investment is the $20 he gave me to get a hundred. That's quantitatively a good investment. There's no emotions. There's just math and activity. If I'm under 30, I'm looking to learn time and risk tolerance timing and risk tolerance. I'm looking to see what my key short-term, mid-term, and long-term objectives are. If I have debt, I'm looking to see how I can create a margin or leverage that debt into more secured profit determined upon my timing or my risk tolerance. But I am absolutely going to find someone with 30 or 40 years of experience in what I want to invest in and ask them when you please tell me when something's overbought. If it's a long-term hold, uh, or oversold. That's where the margins of millionaires are made. That's why real estate, for example, is a great place uh, to go ahead if you don't have a property in order to effectuate uh, what America was built on. All of our laws were built to protect the landowner originally in 1776. We want to leverage all of that, but don't do it by yourself. There's so much dummy tax to be paid in real estate, so much dummy tax to be paid in investing. If you could find someone and several someones I would that have 30 or 40 years experience specifically in what you're interested in and learning and aligning that with your timing and risk tolerance, you will be fine. The number one rule of angel investment is to know the percentage of investment that you're gonna make. So for me, I predetermine every January, a certain percentage of all of my income will go towards angel investing uh, because it's the most risky of all investments uh, because anything can happen because you're not as far down the line. 
uh, some of the other rules besides detaching my emotions and just using a quantitative effect of how much I'm going to invest. It's for me, understanding the entrepreneur. Because in angel investing, the most critical of all components has nothing to do with the business, has nothing to do with the ideas. It's picking the jockey. And the number one common denominator that I have found in investing in entrepreneurs and angel investment is the desire or the need to be what they must be. You know, in order to succeed with an angel investment, you got to stay in business. And if we don't have the right jockey, I don't care how big, how strong, how fast the horse is, you're not going to win the race uh, because that jockey is going to get tired and quit driving the horse. Uh, because guaranteed, you know, as you know, as an entrepreneur, if we want to make God laugh, come up with a well-developed plan, especially one that's early on in the ideation state or innovation stage without having much context in the realm of the angel investment. The good part about it is the return on investment can far exceed anything else. Let me give you an example. Early on, uh, before 2008, um, I would take, for example, 10 investments of $2 million. And the funniest thing was nine of them would lose all my money. But the one might have a 20, 30, 40, or 100 return, and everybody would think I was a genius. Now, I made more money, but they would think I was genius. But statistically, think about it. I was one for 10. That's not even good for a baseball player. That's below the Mendoza line. Uh, so I think those rules of angel investment of knowing the money that you want to invest, the percentage that you want to invest, and make sure that 90% of the investment is based off of the entrepreneur, you will succeed.